calculated question in Moodle is a question where the answer is always going to be a number, but if two students take the same test, each question will generate different numbers for their question. So to see how this works, one thing to realize with this question is there's tons of different types of question types and there's no way I can cover them all. Anytime you have a question marked by something in Moodle, you can click it and it gives you more information. So for instance, this is asking a basic question on length and width with area. So we're going to use their question and I'm just going to paste that in the question and we're going to save on to the answer for a second because we'll need that in a minute. But another thing you can do is always click on this button that says more help and it'll open up Moodle's forum where other instructors and other people who use Moodle interact and allow help for how to use certain questions. And you can use this for any type of question in Moodle quizzes or any activity or any resource. I'm just showing you for calculated type because there are literally thousands of different question types you could have for this calculated question. So moving on, we're going to give this the question name of length times width just so we know that's the correct answer and I put the correct answer in. So we're going to say this is the correct answer formula, length times width, and it uses curly braces as opposed to parentheses to differentiate between each character, and the asterisk means multiplication in this sense. So a grade, again, we want to do 100%. Tolerance is up to you depending on how often or how many significant figures you want the students to show, as well as how many decimal places the correct answer is going to show. For this case, I'm going to make it whole numbers, so we'll just choose zero. If you had different answers that could be the correct one, you can add a blank for another answer choice. The unit handling is the same thing we have saw with the unit on the other numerical question. We can choose if we want units to be shown or not. Again, in this case, I'm just doing whole numbers. We'll set the penalty for each try to 100% and click Save. One thing that happens with this question is when we click save, it does not close the question out. It instead brings up another page to edit these settings. When we click next page, we get to specify how the question is going to be set up. So it gives us a practice question down here with some error because we let it outside of what we had it set up for the decimals and significant figures. So I'm going to make this choose only whole numbers. So for instance, let's start the wild card for L at 5 and the width at 10. And I'm going to allow this to choose anywhere between 1 and 10. And we'll do this one at 10 and 20. And we're not going to allow any decimal places. And we'll scroll down. And since I've changed my wild card tolerance and preferences, I need to update this to fix this question type. So when I click update, it's going to change it. Now it is using 5 and 10. So the correct answer is now 50. And if the student were to enter anywhere between 49.5 and 50.5, it would read it as correct. Again, we could change the tolerance and how many decimal places the correct answer shows. We could also add new values. So in this case, I might want to have a bunch of different questions. So let's just choose 20 and we'll click add. Now when it refreshes, I now have 20 more different choices to choose from when each student takes the test so they can get different numerical questions. We'll save changes and finish this question.